Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Open Computers Challenge. This is MCSH and in today's episode we are going to actually expand our house. Like I promised that for the past couple of episodes I think, but I think we are ready now. We have sand, we have, uh, we don't have that much food but we have some. So yeah, I think we can we can smell that much food, right? Yeah. Okay. So to start off things, I went to uh, chop down some trees, and I think uh, first one first we should do that one, then we should do the other one. But before that, I noticed there are uh, a couple of mistakes that we need to fix in our uh, butts here in Gladys and uh, first thing is um, Gladys is not exactly uh, choosing the best way to exit the house currently it's going down from there and then uh, up from the other side and that is fine I guess but uh, it could cause trouble when we run the reverse function because you know um, Gladys might be over here over there and to come back over here he might break our window right so to fix the problem I'm going to change the home and out uh, addresses so that Gladys would come and go through the roof and I think that makes more sense right so let's do that really quick so I'm going to uh, why am I here okay I'm going to comment these two and that's not how you, yeah and create new variables address that out would be go up four blocks then place down and to go home you would come down two blocks place up then two blocks right and the only problem with this approach is we don't have a place up function which is really easy to solve all we have to do is go to the move function and define place up as robot dot place up yeah that should do it so uh, let's actually turn this off and on so that we force the reload and then um, we can order our robot to do well to go out and come back the path would be empty Right, oh, sorry for that. Yeah, so, uh, go out and come back. Yep, that seemed to work. And that is really slow, by the way, but it has to work for now. Right. So now, uh, let's actually chop the other tree. I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, forward. One, two, three to the left, and then six down. Yeah. So let's do that. We're going to go forward eight blocks, turn left, go then three blocks to the other side, and then down eight blocks. And then, we can figure out how to come back itself. We don't need to teach him how to come back. We can just do it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, let's do it. Uh, nope, this one. All right. And while the robot does that, I notice a few bugs with our system. If you remember last time, the robot uh, kept turning around, breaking some stuff, and then turning the other way around. And that was due to, well, not really a bug. What happened there? That wasn't due to a bug, really. Uh, what was happening there was that um, in our reverse function, we will turn the robot to go back. And when the robot is going back and faces an obstacle, it has to turn around just to, you know, uh, place down whatever block it is. Uh, just to break down whatever block it is facing and then turn around again. 
move one block and then face another obstacle. So to fix that, I'm going to say turn around, go forward, and then turn around again. This should fix the constant turning problem, right? Yeah. Okay, Gladys is back with four o'clock, which is perfect. We are up to seven and we need one, two, three, four, five times two, ten uh, logs. Oh, and there's an apple tree. There's an apple drop there, which I really want. Okay, Gladys, you need to learn how to vacuum things around you. Do you know how to do that? No? Okay. Okay, we have our 27 glasses. We also have some emergency glasses, but we're not going to use those for this occasion. Uh, oh, there's a sapling as well. Okay, you really need to know to learn how to pick items from the ground. Let's teach Gladys how to pick items from the ground. So, uh, I think there's a function called suck, suck down, and suck up. But since we already have a function that starts with S, I'm going to rename those to vacuum, which is short for suck, then vacuum up, and vacuum down. Okay? Yeah. And to things things out, I'm going to so uh, you have 21 dirt blocks at the moment I'm placing some in front of you and I'm going to ask you through the test point to well comment that out comment that out and uh, yeah I'm going to ask you to back you okay Attempt to call local f any value. Really? So you don't have a psych function. Well, you did it now. Do I have to import something? Okay, so I guess uh, the problem uh, here is that this function the vacuum function returns only one value and that could be troublesome because we expect two values. So I'm going to implement a little function of our own called uh, vacuum, which would, you know, um, create a success value and then ask the robot to suck, then return suck and kneel yeah I think I think that makes sense right yeah and we don't need the suck up and suck down for now so let's try again yeah it picked it up so Yep, pick it up. And if there is nothing in front of it, it will throw an error, which we don't like. So I'm going to come here and change the nail to uh, no item. You know, we don't really need that error because, oops, we aren't going to do anything with it.
Let's see what happens. Okay, so we have an error on line 7 of the handlers function. Let's see, line 7 of the handlers function. Was trying to run word, got error, error. And it's saying that the error is nil, but we just made sure that the error, the error wouldn't be nil. Is it an enderman? Yep. Let's turn down the hostile creature. So, uh, why is that happening? I guess we could always return true and nil, regardless of what the function returned for now. You know, that could work. No? Are you sure? Let's see. Lua source test. That is extremely weird. Why is it uh, give me an error every time? What is a test file? It's only V, right? Yeah. Uh, I bet you I'm making some really stupid mistake here. So I'm saying the robot.suck should be the fun. Oh, yeah, of course, because I'm calling the, the wrong function here. I just defined a new function, but I'm calling the wrong function down there. Move that vacuum. Yeah, that should fix it. And we also don't need to return through any every time, we can just do that. Yeah. So let's see. Reload. Do I need to reload? Let's try reloading. Yeah, I was trying to run we got error no item. Okay, perfect. And in the handler function, we just have to say that uh, if the error is no item, then do nothing basically. Yeah. So that it won't repeatedly try to select something. So Lua source test. Yep. And if I throw something and then run it again, it picks it up. Okay. And the items are spawned. Yep. And there are monsters nearby, so I cannot rest. Perfect. Okay. So uh yeah, okay. That works. <laughs> The next thing we need to do is um, force Gladys to chop down the other tree for us. And maybe this time we will actually use the vacuum. So the other tree is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I, I want to say 12 forward and 1 left, but I'm not sure. I guess we can try it. So, yeah. So 12 forward and 1 left and don't go down 8 blocks, go down 6 blocks only this time. But at the end, run the vacuum. Oh, just some question, would it work if I, if there is an item over there? Like what would happen in that case? Just, just to see. Yeah, no, it only f it only picks up items from the front side, which is a shame. I guess what we could do is we could, uh, you know, we could change our move function and uh, do it like this. 
So a success would be false in the beginning, then for i from 1 to 4, do select what's in front of you and then robot the turn right and success would be true or this one um what is the for from syntax it is do oh there is no right this should be like this yeah 